I just couldn't resist one. <laughs> what did the planet say to the asteroid? Comment me, bro. Ha, ha, ha. Comment. Okay. So we've got gravitational field strength we're going to be learning about. So what is it? Well, we have this definition, which is a bit nebulous, but let's actually just write it down here first. So we've got the gravitational force per unit mass. That's going to be the key thing here. Uh, experienced by a point mass m. So we have an equation here that's going to go like this. First of all, we're going to write it as lowercase g, and it just goes f over m, which is also equal to g capital M over r squared. So this way, here's your equation you get on your data booklet. Now, sometimes uh, it's important just to look at you know where this actually came from. As long as you do your f over m, it should be easy to see. Let's see here. Okay, so g was, well, what's the equation for f? If you remember that from before, our Newton's uh, universal law of gravitation, it goes g m m over r squared. But then you took that whole thing, you divided it by m, that means you have another little m there, and if you notice then what happens, the little m's cancel out, and you end up with just, aha, you just have g equals capital G, capital M over r squared. That's where this right here came from, just so you can see it's not so crazy. So really all you have to do is you just take your f, divide it by m. That's why we say it's a force per unit mass. So now let's take this thing, this thing called g and this gravitational field strength. Let's figure out its units. It's a lot easier to see them from right here. So if you look at the top part right here is f, so that must be in newtons, over meters, uh, sorry, mass, uh, that's a mass which is in kilograms. So we're going to say this here is in newtons per kilogram. There we go. All right, what's the force between the two masses? That's got to be in newtons. Uh, the mass has got to be in kilograms. And of course, you have a gravitational constant. You just look that up. I think it'd be a good idea maybe to look at the units for G as well. So let's just look at the units. So if we want the units for G, well, let's see. Uh, first of all, if we've got it in force uh, per mass, then it would be newtons, like we said before, over kilograms. But if you remember what a newton is, I mean, remember F equals MA? Uh, that's the equation for force. So force is mass times acceleration. So mass has units of kilograms. I'm just doing the units for N here, for newtons. But it's also got uh, units of acceleration because it's mass times acceleration. Acceleration is units of meters per second squared. That's just newtons. But I've got to divide by kilograms, so that means I put kilograms on the bottom, and guess what happens? The kilograms cancel out, and lo and behold, I get something interesting. Look, I get the units for G equals meters per second squared. And doesn't that seem like the units for an acceleration? And that's why I think it's really nice to see this, because then you can see, ah, this is a piece that's really important here. So for the exam tip here, I think these are super, super important here, that the gravitational field strength is the acceleration due to gravity. That's really important. So that means in a question, I mean, if you're asked, hey, what's uh, the gravitational field strength at the surface of the Earth? Well, that's actually 9.81 you know, meters per second squared. Um, if you look it up in a data book, it actually says 9.8, but it's fine if you put 9.81 as well. But this is really useful because of this, right? You can use this idea here to find the acceleration due to gravity on any object with mass m and radius r. So as long as you know the mass of the planet, let's say, and the radius of the planet, you can figure out not just the gravitational field strength, that is the same as the acceleration due to gravity. So that means as long as I give you m and r, you can figure those out. So let's do that. So I figured let's use a real life example here. So Mars, uh, ha the planet Mars has two moons, uh, Deimos and Phobos. Uh, so this one here is Deimos here, this is this one. Now we're gonna make a few assumptions here, okay? First of all, we're gonna assume it's circular even though it's not, So, but we'll assume it's a circle. And we do know its mass. So let's say, so Deimos's mass is 1.5 times 10 to the 15 kilograms, and its radius is 6,200 meters, right? Because that's what this is, times 10 to the three is just 1,000. So this, it's a very, very small radius. If you think about it, it's only 6.2 um, kilometers in radius, so from here to here, which is actually really not much. So let's figure out what's the acceleration due to gravity. You might think, ooh, how do I do that? Ah, you gotta remember your equation, right? It's just g equals g m over r squared. All I gotta do is just put in those numbers. So let's do those. So I've got g then is gonna be equal to capital G, remember that's 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, that you just look up in your data booklet, times the mass, 
which is 1.5 times 10 to the 15 kilograms, divide that by r squared, which is going to be 6,200 squared. Don't forget to square it. So I'm going to get out my trusty calculator and see what I get here. So I'll do exactly this. I'll do a fraction, and I'll do 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. All that times 1.5 times 10 to the power of 15. All that divided by, and remember to go 6200, and remember to square that. A lot of people forget the square part. There you go, so I get 0 0.002603. Now, if I wanted the proper number of significant figures, let's see, I've got two here, I've got two here. You always have to use the least that you're given. So in this case right here, I can say it's approximately equal to 0 0.00, and I'll just say 26. And remember the units, it's in meters per second squared. Now remember, I just found the gravitational field strength, but that's also the same as the acceleration due to gravity. Now, compare that to, for example, on Earth. What is it on Earth? Oh yeah, G is 9.81. So this is way less. Right? This is much, much less. In fact, this is so little uh, that if you were to jump, for example, if you jumped really hard, you might actually just leave. In fact, I've got another question that I've designed for you on another video, actually, where we're going to figure out what's the escape speed for Demo. So if you're a higher level student, for example, we'll play around with that, where you can actually see like how fast you have to go to just leave Demos. Turns out it's not much. Like uh, if you did like a, uh, if you had like a skateboard ramp, for example, that's probably enough to actually just leave. If you just like run a skateboard, just left, like the, just did a jump, you'll probably just leave. So let's do another example. This time we're asked, what's the acceleration due to free fall? We just want g. Uh, on the surface of a planet that has 10 times Earth's mass and a radius that has 20 times that of Earth. Now this one seems a bit weird because it seems like you're not given enough information. Like, well, no, don't I need to know the mass of the Earth? And don't I need to know the radius of the Earth? I'm not expected to memorize that, am I? Nope. This is actually a sneaky one. If you're careful about it, you can still solve it. Okay, you don't have to know those facts. So let's think about carefully what do we have here. Well, we want to find g, really. So let's just write our equations. We've got g is f over m, which is equal to g capital M over r squared. So that's all we know. And we're going to be trying to find that. So we're going to find ca lowercase g, which is going to be capital G times. Now, what's m? Uh, it's actually going to be 10 times Earth's mass. So I'm going to say 10 times mass, and I usually put a little e for Earth like this. So 10 times Earth's mass over, and I've got 20 times the radius of the Earth. So I'm going to say 20 times the radius of the Earth, and remember that whole thing is going to be squared. Okay, uh, let me keep going then. So I usually put the 10 in front, so then I'll say it's 10 times g times the mass of the Earth. Uh, whoops, that doesn't really look like an e, does it? There you go. All that, divide that by, let's see, 20 squared is going to be 20 times 20, which is 2 times 2, which is 4, and add two zeros, so it's going to be 400 times radius of the Earth squared. Uh, what else can I do? I guess I can say, well, 10 over 400 is the same thing as 1 over 40, I guess. I can just kill some of those uh, zeros. So then I end up with just g is equal to, let's see, it's going to be 1 over 40, and it's going to be g m e over r e squared. Now here's the problem. I don't know m e and I don't know r e. I don't know these values. Now I do know g, but the interesting thing is this right here, that since it's earth and earth, this is actually this g m over r squared here. This is just g on earth. In other words, that's equal to, well, 9.81 meters per second squared. So this is the cheap part. Do you see how cheap that was? I didn't know mass of the Earth. I didn't know the radius of the Earth. But I do know that this mass together, this GME over RE squared, that mass is actually 9.81 because it's Earth, Earth. So that means then that I can say, aha, I can just say G equals then, well, it's a 1 over 40 times just 9.81. So let me just do that on my calculator. I'll just do 9.81 uh, divided by 40. So I'll get out my trusty calculator, and I'll just go 9.81, divide that by 40. And I end up with an answer of 0.24525. All right, let's see how many significant figures to use. I've got two and two here, so I can just say, all right, I'll use two. So I'll say g is approximately equal to, let's see, it'll be 0 0.2, and then this four. Oh, that five will make it round up, so it'll be 0 0.25. 
of course, meters per second squared. So again, quite a bit smaller than the Earth, right? I mean, on Earth, it's 9.81. I mean, you can see it right here, right? It says 1 40th what it is on Earth. But there we go. We're done.